Okay, we got kind of an unusual story here. As I told you, I, I have different venues where I go, gun shows or flea markets, and, and sell guns, accessories, reloaded ammo. I've been going to this one flea market for a couple years now, and it does quite well, but you know, sometimes you're spending a lot of time out there and you got nothing to show for it, and it kind of gets wearing on your nerves. While you're out there, you run across all kinds of people at the flea market and tell you all kinds of bizarre things, and I got this, I got that. Well, a guy walks up to me, and he's looking at some of the old guns and the ammo, and he goes, and he's telling me he's trying to build a semi-automatic carbine out of either a PPSH-43 uh, or something, and some other thing and then something about putting together an AK-47 parts kit and I, I said yeah I said I might have some like a flat bending jig and some tooling and stuff left around well he goes uh, I got these car, uh, Carcano barreled actions you know I got so much money in them and I want to you know trade or this and that I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I don't know what the hell he's talking about I said okay and I'm like, I really don't want to touch them because I don't know. The boar shot out. What condition are they? Well, they're Corcona. I said, all right. Are they carbines or are they rifles? Oh, hold on a minute. Damn, phone, phone ringing. All right, so anyway, the guy goes, I got these Carcano barrel actions. I said, are they rifles or carbines? They're Carcanos. I said, all right, are they this long, or are they this long? They're Carcanos. And I'm like, here, here, here we go, all right? Uh, doesn't know what the hell he's got or nothing, so I said, all right. So he agrees, he says, uh, you know, I, I'll use the tool, tools. And I had tools, blueprints, uh, I even had a couple blank flats and that. I said, here, I'll give you one, give them to you. And I told him, you know, to, to put these guns back together, you know, even if the barreled action's good, it's going to be astronomical. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, I, I kind of did. To buy the stock and everything, I mean, what's available, I mean, you could wait around for years and try to get it at a lower cost. But what's out there online... It's like $275, $280 put these back together. Yeah. He was only new with it, so he must have looked into it. So I go over there, show him the stuff I had, give it to him, and he looks at me and goes, well, here, take all three of them. So he gave me all three of them. And what they are is their Italian cavalry carbine uh, 91 slash 38s, you know, World War II jobs. And I ended up with three of them, and they were packed in some of the most nasty cosmoline you ever seen. I mean, it took me a week just to clean them up. But, on the good side, all the boars look real good on all of them, as far as I can tell. But it brings up a thing. Somebody must have disassembled these guns and were sporterizing them and getting ready to sell them as a more marketable item. Because as is, probably they didn't sell well back in the old days. And somebody probably said, you know, we're going to make these to where they're more usable, user-friendly, and, and work on them. And I think they were stripped down to this, like this here. The bayonet was removed, and they stripped them down. And I think the next step, if you, you'll see a lot of them where they'll mill this thing flat, they'll mill off this, and it'll just kind of be like that. Um, you see a lot of the carbines like that, and that's probably what was going to go on with this here. So we'll take a look at them, and, and an interesting thing is it, it gives you insight on what was done to these post-war. Okay, in the surplus market. And that's how you find a lot of these odd variations is these guns were modified other than by the military when they were just obsolete weapons. Uh, 
And again, the sights on these, we'll take a closer look. Another key thing is the sights on these have been modified. Okay, I know they have. And I'm going to do a video on, on a Carcano, get in depth on it, and get into where you can enjoy using it and shooting it. And part of the thing is you're going to have to look for sights that have been modified. Now, I noticed that somebody was doing this commercially. Okay, and we'll take a closer look at it, but a lot of people don't understand the sights on the Carcano as they are military-wise, and if you get information to say, hey, you know, this is the way the sight works, but if you did the same thing with these guns, these sights have been changed. So you see, this is where you have to, you know, people ask me why I get involved in this, you have to get different examples different information and that way you'll know because if you only buy one Carcano, if you bought one cavalry carbine like this and go, oh I got a Carcano and these sites have been modified and people are telling you well you know your site picture should be like this this and that it ain't gonna work for you you're gonna be all over the place shooting it and the ammunition isn't cheap so again we'll take a look at these and this is gonna be an ongoing project and what I'm going to do is invest the money to put one together, stock, bolt, and everything else. And because now we're monkeying around, swapping parts around, I have to invest in the headspace gauges, which aren't cheap. The set of three, because um, most people get the no, no go, but I also get the field gauge. So you span 10,000, it's not just 5,000, it's between go and no go. Uh, and I'll be able to check these out and take them out eventually. I'll accumulate enough parts where I can headspace, check the actions, and shoot them. But here, I'll show you what was modified on them, and we'll take a look at the actions. Okay, looking at it, they're just a basic Carcano action. You got your trigger and everything else. You got the fixed rear sight, bayonet's been removed, and the front sight blade. Now what they were doing with this is much like that little troop special I have. Somebody has gone, if you look, and ground these down. These rear sights, you can tell that the grinding's fairly rough too. Or machined them on all three of them. So basically what they were doing is they're lowering these sights. Now as you see this one's still marked caliber 6.5. But this one here has been scrubbed of everything. They ground the caliber off. They kind of ground off all of the markings. Other than... Oh, hold on a second. Well, I wasn't paying close attention. They uh, even ground the serial numbers off of this one. So this one's like a gun with no serial numbers, which is not a good thing. Okay. And this one here still has the uh, markings. This one, I think, was. We'll take a look at the markings here. All right, this one here, Gardoni, I believe, is 1944, and it's got its serial number. And you see, just rounded barrel. Some markings on. It. I don't know if they're pulling them off, but that's what you got on one. This one here has been totally scrubbed of everything. Some markings on the bottom of the receiver. This one here is a 1940, I believe. And also, again, some markings down on the bottom. So, not too bad. Uh, the reason they scrubbed the numbers off of them, if the guns were being sold after the war, kind of like violating treaties and that, you'll find them, and you really shouldn't take the numbers off, but, you know, these things are considered scrap iron anyway, so. Now, the thing about it, like I said, all three of these have the rear sight monkeyed with, just like uh, my little troop special carbine. So this must have been done by the uh, dealer or somebody, somebody was doing this to the guns, processing them, 
to market them on the surplus market. Now also if we look at these, the front sights on all three of these are not standard military front sights. If you remember what the, uh, if you look at my other videos, that is not the style front sight that goes on an Italian military rifle. We'll get them over here and take a better look at them. They're kind of high and they're not shaped like the, uh, they're shaped more like a commercial blade rifle or they could have been a sight used on a different rifle. I don't know if the uh, long rifles use that sight, but these are much higher and taller than what I've seen on my other carbine examples. So what I end up having here is uh, three rifles with the sights changed. Probably better for shooting. So it kind of piqued my curiosity and like I said I'm going to plunge and put the money in and be able to put them together with a bolt, uh, trigger guard and stock and just take the actions out and shoot them. And then see probably the one that's the most accurate I'll keep. I don't know what I'll do with the others. But it's an interesting little sideline project. But the moral of the story is, even when you buy a carbine, and I mean these people send me emails asking me questions. I tried this, I tried your ammunition, I, I, I did this, but I still can't um, hit anything with the gun. And it's, it's not doing, you know, like in your video when you take the gun out and shoot it. Well, these here are modified. These are going to shoot way different, so I'm going to have to work on this and do a special video. But it goes to show you that at one point in time, whether recently or in the past, these guns were taken and, and modified by someone else outside of a military arsenal to make some sort of a marketable gun. And I believe that's, that's what happened with these. So. We're going to hang on to these and work with them more as we get time, and I'll keep you posted on it.